Uh, hey Matthew, have you seen my painting anywhere? What? You know, the painting that, um, Purple gave me? How would I know where that is? Ah, oh, great. Just when I wanted to film, it just started raining and... Ow. Hey, my name is Ivan, and today we're taking a look at the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus Prime. You know I've been waiting for this. Now, I did not watch the original Generation 1 series as a kid, but I did watch a hidden gem that is Transformers The Headmasters. In Japanese, with subtitles, so I don't laugh my ass off. This is Unicorn. The Earth will soon be a part of me. Watching that series inadvertently made me very attached to Rodimus' convoy. Especially with that Yume no Daburo convoy scene. That was so cool to me as a kid. Still, pretty cool to me now. And about 10 years later, I finally got my first ever figure of Rodimus Prime. No joke, I missed out on every other Rodimus figure throughout the years, including the Power of the Primes one, which I did consider getting, but I didn't like him, okay? He just looked weird. So finally owning what is considered to be the best figure of Rodimus Prime is just... Great. Now out of the box, the figure was packaged in his vehicle mode, so we'll start with that first. And the painting and the sculpting on the Winnebago is nice, really nice. The color is cartoon accurate, the flames are nicely painted, and the overall shape of this thing is super appealing to look at, I mean, woo! It's almost too perfect, and that's not an exaggeration. The only thing holding it back is that the front section sticks out a little too much, but whatever, I'm not gonna dock off points for that one little issue, even with the price point. Well, you do get some lovely effect parts, which you can store in the trailer itself, you can plug the black smoke on the smokestacks, and these energy beams on the back. Kind of gives the vehicle a little bit more life. And of course, with the price point, the vehicle mode is quite big, but does it really warrant the $800 that I paid? But whatever, it rolls pretty well. And of course the trailer does have other functions, but we're just gonna take it off and put it to the side. The car itself is pretty nice, but kinda looks weird without the trailer. The spoiler is painted in a nice yellow, very appealing, and man, I really have no complaints at all for the vehicle mode, it is as good as it gets. And of course, the black smoke works here as well. We're also bringing his weapons. The Sword of Primus can peg into the underside, and the gun can peg into the other side of the car. But the robot mode is... even better. I tell you, don't skip this transformation. You're gonna want to see the black magic that Hasbro pulled off with this. And here we have the road the heck is this pose. The robot mode, which I was holding the whole time, 
looks fantastic. So much paint apps here, and just the most top-notch sculpting you can get on a modern WFC Transformer. I can almost complain about the beautiful painting because I, ooh, I don't want to risk chipping anything. So before we go on with the figure itself, let's talk about the big old box, not that box, which opens to reveal a cannon. Plug in the energy beams, and this is a very cool display piece. Makes me feel nostalgia for a toy that I never owned. Of course, the inside of the trailer is completely spammed with ports. I mean, when are you ever gonna shove so many weapons into this thing? And of course, the turret is removable and quite poseable. You can get this thing in any pose you want, and the peg here can peg onto any peg. No need for me to show you every configuration and placement, you can go find MGO for that. Other effects parts include this giant blast effect and this matrix effect part. The giant blast effect can separate into small pieces and has possibly an endless amount of configurations so I'm not even gonna try. You can pluck the tip into the rifle, which folds out and plucks into his hand. Wrap his articulated fingers around it and it looks great. The black smoke of course still works on the stacks, and you can open up his chest to reveal a matrix chamber. This is probably my favorite part of this figure. The matrix is removable and it is very similar to the one from the Earthrise Prime, just with different paint. And here's the one from the Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And speaking of Hot Rod, if you have to backdrop from that figure, it looks great with this figure as well. And bringing the Sword of Primus back in, it does have a little flip pal peg and you can store it on the back. But of course, it looks much better plugged into his hand. Great reference to Regeneration 1, which I did read. With so many accessories, you can be sure about the posability being great. Butterfly joints? Wrist joints? Those are not in any way related to the transformation. It is merely just there for better posing options. The waist swivel is kinda limited though, but untap his backpack and there you go. I can't even begin to describe how great the posability is. Almost any pose you can think of that is humanly possible, you bet he can be in it. And back to the price point, is this figure really worth the commander class price point? Based on size, he really isn't that big, but I don't think you're paying for size here. I say even the trailer itself isn't worth the $800. What is worth it though is the engineering. The transformation is so well engineered, and overall I truly think this figure is masterpiece level in terms of engineering. So, if you really want this figure, consider the trailer and everything else just added bonuses. The figure is what you're paying for here. So, if you want it, get it. Do it. I think it's a really good figure that you really should pick up if you like. And that's it, a true mainline masterpiece figure. I'm sure I've said it before, and I'll say it again when I get my hands on Galvatron. This is the end of the road, Galvatron. Okay. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs>